Hey everybody, um, time for the next video. Basically, um, the next thing I wanna get into is how do you set these deals up with people? Um, just in case you missed the previous videos, we're looking at uh, if you are an affiliate, an agency, product, offer owner, coach, whatever it is, um, this can be applied to your business. An affiliate, this is a great kind of affiliate model. So we're looking for people who have relevant products, um, offers, etc., and then audiences, we can connect the two and take a cut, or if you are a product owner, coach, whatever, you can find audiences, maybe you have an audience, email list, Facebook group, you can go out and earn more money from other products or brokering these deals, it can go both ways. So there's kind of a mindset, or let's call it a frame of mind you wanna have when you talk to people, when you pitch people. Frankly, when I'm like, hey, do you wanna make more sales of your product? Or hey, do you wanna make more money off your existing customer base, audience, whatever? Rarely do people really object. They may want some details. Um, but I just wanna get into a few notes about kind of posturing yourself uh, well and figuring out how to work these deals out so you know people feel like they're getting something fair, a fair deal, and you're also getting a fair cut. And uh, just how to structure some of these and kind of talk properly, get these kind of scripts, if you will, almost like sales scripts um, to work in your favor. So let's get into the presentation. Okay, so now we want to look at the right side of this list, the audiences, and look at how you can approach these people. So where do you start finding audiences? Other product or service owners, right? So let's say someone sells a diet supplement and you have someone else who has a diet ebook or info product or digital course. Well, you could offer one to the other and even cross promote, right? That's one way to start. Um, you have a health product, they've got a health list. So Facebook groups. Can use the health example again. Maybe you have a keto product or someone has a keto product. You find someone with a Facebook group related to keto and say, hey, do you want to offer this to your uh, fans or, or group members on a um, you know revenue share basis, all the same stuff. LinkedIn is good. You can ask people if they have audiences. Hey, who has an email list? Who has an audience? Who has a list of buyers that they would like to earn more off of? Um, Instagram people, you can just email them. Website owners can be good. Some just like, let's say some a mommy blogger, a recipe site that has an email list. You can negotiate really good rates sometimes actually. For example, recipes, um, very big niche. Health, beauty related products do great. You could offer that. Um, once I did a... Uh, revenue share deal of a health product on a kind of a mommy lifestyle type site. We just set up an ad, a banner, and it did great. Uh, Instagram people, YouTubers, you're going to message them and say, hey, are you open to promoting this product on a revenue share commission basis? Uh, people with YouTube channels can work really well, especially if the YouTube or Instagram person will do like a shout out or formal promo video for the product. Um, but yeah, just ask if people are looking for complimentary products to promote to their email list, customer database. Um, so that's where to find people and kind of just pitching. It's very similar to pitching for offers, trying to find offers and products. Would you like to get more revenues from your existing Facebook group? your fans on Instagram or subscribers on YouTube, your email list, whatever the audience is, right? I have some related products that may do well. We can do it on a rev share, no risk. I'll let you look at it and and I'll only bring things that are not competitive, but I can even, uh, you can, you know, validate if you think it's competitive or not. And then we can test and if it does well, we'll promote it regularly um, to all of your leads. 30 days out after you're done promoting your product or whatever it is. I gave an example. Um, one of these I used to broker, it was uh, business kind of sales, marketing, coaching, like how to grow your business. And then um, people would call in on the phone. And then after 
a few weeks, we would get the leads and we would promote things like business, uh, how to get business credit, for example, to other types of business loans and all that stuff. So you can c- kind of see how these things can come together pretty easily. And most people go for it. So how do you negotiate with an audience owner? Um, it's kind of the same as a product owner, right? If I'm getting 40% revenue share from the product owner, let's say for a $2,000 product, right? And uh, then I'm going to go to the audience owner and offer maybe 30%. If you have your own audience, you can just, you know, if it's your you're a product owner, you've got an audience, this isn't going to apply. But if you're just brokering, again, if someone has a $2,000 course, let's say I've gotten a 40% revenue share deal with them, it's $800, then I could go and offer um, 30% to the audience owner, so $600. Uh, dollars for them. Basically, I'm getting paid 800 and I'm giving them 600 of that 800. So I'm getting 200. Now, again, uh, if this is a big audience, these numbers can really stack up. Sometimes it's way higher. You may have an affiliate deal where you're at like a ClickBank product. Some of those are at 70 to 90% commission. Um, and again, you may think people, well, why wouldn't they just go and ClickBank and find it themselves? So many will not. So many, you know, they're a Shopify store owner. They don't even probably know much about ClickBank. So let's just say you're getting an average of a $100 order from a ClickBank thing and they're paying you 80%, right? So you're getting 80 bucks. You factor in, let's say 10%, maybe refunds. So you're more getting like 70. Offer them 50, offer them 60. That's half. That's good for them. And again, you're doing the work. You're taking on you know, there's no risk uh, because it's revenue share, et cetera. So just kind of work with these, play with these. Again, what are their margins? Do they have good margins to work with? If they're a product, um, for example, I had the CBD brand I really wanted to promote and they were giving like a 5%, they wanted to do 5%. And it's like, well, if I take this to whatever email list or CBD related, et cetera, there's just no margin to work with. So just, you know, wouldn't even work or if the audience person wants too high, uh, but usually you can find a middle ground. And if you got to start lower, just say, hey, we'll start at 5% or 10%, but if it goes well and we're pushing volume, you know, would you agree to raise it? We'll revisit and raise it. Let's do a test, see how it goes. Um, but it's pretty straightforward again. And, and generally, because people aren't having to put up money or pay you anything, you shouldn't get too much resistance. Um, but anyways, you kind of get the idea of how this works. Um, let's just hop back to here. Remember, here's where you approach these groups and what happens, which is cool is you build up a database on both sides of these, where you've got maybe a new product, uh, let's say a keto product. Oh, well, I've already got a keto email list here, a keto group here, this YouTuber who will promote some keto stuff or whatever. And once you build these up, they're kind of there forever. You're building this pipeline of potential business. And again, taking a piece. So um, look out for the next video. Uh, Eventually, we're going to get into some specific examples to kind of wrap your head around this. But that's all for now.